Ah, Undertale. The internet's most loved and hated video game. This game came out of the blue from one indie developer named Toby Fox. Now, you can't even cross the street without hearing about how good of a game it is. And God forbid you haven't played it either. You'll get crucified. Yo, Sovereign! You ever played Undertale, my boy? First of all, how did you get a mouse? Second of all, have you ever heard of knocking? Third of all... What? My boy, you're gonna have to play Undertale. Uh, Alright, I mean, I could play it later, but like, I have this essay to do. Uh, like... No, no, no. You have to play Undertale, my boy. Yeah, you, you have to play Undertale, my boy. Is it the way I'm dressed? Yo, you gotta play Undertale, my boy. You, you gotta to play Undertale! Right. You gotta play Undertale! Stop what the fuck you're doing and play Undertale! Right. You gotta play Undertale! Yeah, man, that's pretty much how it feels to be one of the few people that haven't played Undertale. I did a live stream for Undertale, and it was a unique experience, to say the least, especially from my time here on YouTube. Being able to decide who lives and dies was a very nice change of pace. For this video, we'll be going over each boss in the game, and ranking their battles based on how fun and memorable they are. We will be discussing each boss for genocide, neutral, pacifist, and true pacifist routes in the game. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button for more Undertale content. My name is Junior Leva, aka Mr. Awesome, and here are the Undertale boss rankings. Aww, look at the little doggo. He's such a cute little ninja good boy. Doggo speak. Fuck! The doggo fight is honestly one of the most underwhelming fights in this entire game. It's a fun concept, but it's something that we all didn't expect. Like, let's be honest, we all wanted it to move so badly when, when he told us not to. That's quite literally the only attack he does on you though. You stand still, pet him, and claim victory. That, well, that, that all depends on whether you spare him or not, because if you don't spare him, you can easily clown him. But that all depends on your morals and your justice system on your mind. I don't know. It all depends on you, okay? It's a game about choice. Don't be mean. Let Doggo live. Ah, uh, come on. How come I get this ugly thing to rank? Hey there, little fella. How are you? You ah! Jesus Christ, don't scare me like that. Shiren is a very forgettable boss that pops out of nowhere. I don't really see Shiren as a boss, but apparently it is considered a boss since the wiki says so. So now I'm stuck talking about this damn thing. Do me a favor and never look at me like that again. She sings her song for you, which can hurt you, I guess, but they are easy as hell to dodge. You encounter this boss no matter if you're doing a genocide or pacifist run, so feel free to do what you want with this monstrosity. Jesus. Napstablook is a white Pac-Man ghost with an actual personality. Unfortunately, that personality is him just being boring. Kind of sounds like me, to be honest. You meet Napstablook in the very beginning of the game just laying down on the floor. He doesn't have much of an attack besides crying like a little baby. He gets a higher spot on this list than that of the previous bosses, mainly because you actually have to interact with him as a character if you partake in a pacifist run. It's just one of the benefits of being kind to others in this game. Look at the whale of a good time this guy is having. To encounter him, you have to be in a specific area and roam around there for an unbearable amount of time. He can actually be a hard boss if you're not careful enough. To spare him, you have to continuously feed him compliments to make his ego become higher and higher. You can also choose to ignore him until he ultimately decides to leave you alone and move on to someone else who that wants to feed his ego. No one likes you, Glide. Go show off somewhere else. Ho oh, ho! Things are about to get epic! That's it? What the fuck?
Dougie is a couple that you have to face. Think about that couple that you knew in high school. You know, the couple in school that everyone knows about because they can't stop talking about how much they love each other. Oh, I love her so much. Oh, I can't stop thinking about her. Oh, I absolutely can't live without her. You damn right you can't. You damn right you can't. If you're doing a pacifist run, you simply pet one of them to make the other one jealous until they consider you a good boy. Another couple fight in the Undertale game. And at least this one's a bit more interesting than the doggy couple battle. This one is a romance for the bros. They have a love for each other that no one understands. Not even themselves. Make them confess their love for one another, and you'll be able to spare them. Either that, or just murder them. Like the savage you probably really are underneath. Oh, look at the little doggy. It's so little and tiny. Give me a hug. Never mind, I no longer wish for you to give me a hug. I need you to go away, please. Thank you. I said go away, please. Greater Doggo is a deceptive individual in every shape and form. He starts off cute and innocent, then seemingly intimidating, and back to being cute and innocent. For this ranking, we have the biggest dummy in the game. And I don't even mean that as an insult. He's literally a dummy. He's also pretty freaking stupid. To fight the boss, you have to make his own attacks hurt him. His heat sinking missiles run off in the other direction, and you can hit him to irritate him. Keep it up and he'll use his ultimate attack. He'll eventually leave you alone once you've exhausted all of his options. And honestly, it's probably one of the funniest battles in the game. I just wish it he appeared more often in the, in the game. My first encounter with this boss, I actually found it pretty hard to fight because I didn't know he attacked himself. So shoutouts to you, Undertale dummy. You're, you're something else. You're, you're literally a dummy head. <laughs> I take back about Shiren, all these creatures are the most horrifying things I've ever seen. Ayo, why am I the only one ranking these ugly fucks? It looks like each and every one of these creatures are in constant pain just for being alive. You have no idea how much I wanted to put these guys out of their misery when I first encountered them. It's especially painful knowing that these enemies are experiments gone wrong in the abandoned lab. The amalgamates are multiple enemies categorized into one boss. They all have their own unique encounters and it's hard to tell what they like and dislike from the start. But they can all be spared, so don't worry. I'm honestly sorry that I even had to fight this boss. So sorry is another secret boss in the game with a really complicated requirement just to even encounter him. You have to find a specific area in the game, change your game's internal clock to a specific time, and then and only then will you be able to face off against this boss. So sorry is an apologetic boss that just wants to be an artist. With with everything going on and him fighting, you're still late for your drawing event. But hey, just like most artists I know out there, even myself, I gotta say, maybe one day you'll be recognized for your talent. So if you're an artist out there, you'll make it. Just keep on pushing. Torio is honestly one of the bosses that is hard to accept that you have to fight them. However, you have to face off against her. There's no going back on this. And this is where you decide your fate. You can actually betray this boss if you play it like a pacifist and then decide to hit her the last second. It's a one shot kill and it's honestly the coldest thing you could ever do. She's all like, Nani? and there goes possibly the only motherly figure you'll ever have. I never thought that a humanoid sea creature could have such an explosive personality. You run into Undyne no matter if you're playing pacifist or genocide. However, the boss version you face is greatly different if you're murdering or sparing. For this specific ranking, we're talking specifically the neutral or pacifist Undyne battle. Honestly, the chase portion of the battle is probably the best part of about the boss to be honest. Dodging the lances one after the other makes you feel like Neo from the Matrix. It's a boss that punishes you for slacking off. She's honestly one of my favorite characters in the game. She's a hero of the underground to everyone but you. You hate her at first, but at the end, she comes around and you love her.
The Nintendo Switch exclusive boss, Mad Mew Mew, is a brand new boss that was added to the game. This is honestly one of the most unique bosses despite being mostly dialogue. However, this fight uses one of the most coolest mechanics in the game that is only unique to the Switch. You have to use the Joy-Con sticks to control the two halves of your heart. It's so, so, so different and can only be used for the fight only. No other battle requires you to use this mechanic. If you have a Nintendo Switch and want to get into Undertale, this boss is definitely the reason to get it for sure. The man Papyrus himself! What is there not to like about Papyrus? This is the man right here! Technically, he is a skeleton, but you get what I'm saying. You really get to see him as a character in the past of his run. This is where he really shines and stands out since you got to see more of his personality. He is a skeleton that wants to have fun, and his battle shows that a lot. It is extremely surprising every time you face off against him. This boss almost feels like a game of Dance Dance Revolution since we're over here hitting different arrow keys so damn fast. Muffet is a boss that was actually a Patreon for Toby Fox. The interesting thing about this boss is that it's skippable as long as you have a specific item that was given to you in the beginning of the game. You have to hold on to that item and never use it or eat it up until this boss in order to skip it. It's like an easter egg that you wouldn't be able to figure out yourself unless you searched it up or did a walkthrough and, or somehow magically made it that way. Muffet has her own attack system allowing you to cycle through her web lines super fast. This means that attacks are coming at you super super fast. So you have to get a good reaction time in order to avoid them all. She's an interesting concept and a great addition to the many bosses in the game. That's it? Oh. Thank God that's not all. I thought it was going to be another Metaton Neo scenario. Undyne the Undying is a genocide battle you face off against when you get to Undyne's battle. The music to this battle is so fucking epic. If you're, really, if you're already familiar with how Undyne's pacifist battle is, you won't have a crazy hard time with this battle. It's just a more difficult version than the pacifist neutral battle. And that's for most players because I, I have yet to personally beat her. She's a, she's a pretty hard boss. But hey, that's all because she's ready to kill. She's a warrior willing to protect the people of the underground. And I can respect that. Every time I lose against her, yes, I get frustrated and mad, but I respect that. Oh, look, it's Flowey. Toby Fox, who hurt you? Not to mention that the laugh track is from the 1960s McDonald's commercial. I'm terrified. Photoshop Flowey looks exactly like what the name implies. It's Flowey photoshopped into a monstrosity. In this part of the game, he is in possession of all the other souls. So you know he's not fucking around. This battle is just utter torture. He overwrites your save file, loads and saves during the battle. He even flat out deletes your previous save file before you even start the battle. There is no turning back in this battle. Thankfully, there are the souls of the other humans to help you with this fight. This music is my jam! Metaton is one of the most aesthetically pleasing bosses in all of Undertale. This is the boss that got me into playing Undertale after I beat Undertale. If that makes any sense. It, it, it's the boss that made me want to replay Undertale, okay? Dodging the boss's bombs is so satisfying, shooting them down and creating openings. He cares about his show a lot, especially during the fight. You also get a mandated commercial break, which honestly as a person that's in the that has studied the film industry is kind of important. Take breaks when you do stuff guys. It, it, it really resets you for a little bit. And when you sadly beat Metaton, you get this very wholesome ending. We all love this boss and love to see Metaton in action. Now if only I can get this guy to stop biting his lip. It's kind of provocative and it's it's kind of uncomfortable. Yo mercy fool! Yeet! That's one of the most badass moments in Undertale. Seeing Asgore just rip the hell out of your mercy option is so badass. This is, quote unquote, the final boss that everyone in the underground talks about. 
I am, of course, talking about the pacifist playthrough of this boss because, of course, like the rest of the genocide run, all the bosses are weak as fuck. What I like the most about this fight is the fact that it is extremely forced upon you, which makes him even more difficult than the rest of the bosses. If you partake in the true pacifist run, then you actually won't be able to fight Asgore. It's a shame too because you spend most of the time hearing about the king and how he is a true enemy and the reason you're being attacked by monsters. However, his battle is pretty sick, so that's why he deserves a spot on this list. For this ranking, it's Asriel. This is one of the most epic boss battles I've ever faced. The fact that there's a colorful shape-shifting background going on really does mean there's business because every battle before this and after this, technically, is all dark. So. This is some real shit we got going on. Story-wise, Flowey is actually a goat monster, and Asgore and Toriel are ghost monsters as well. And Asgore and Toriel's names combined is... Oh my god. That's their son? All jokes aside though, it really is a great boss to face off against and it's probably the most perfect way to end the true pacifist route of the game. The music makes this boss battle so damn epic. I actually use this song at the gym or during any daily activities where I need a boost of energy. Great job Asriel, you deserve this spot on the list. And shout out to you Toby Fox cause honest to god the, the soundtrack is really really fire for this battle. At the number one spot we have Sans. The puny skeleton with the desires to just hang out with the buds. Unfortunately. You killed literally everyone in this game besides him. You just activated the recipe for disaster and a bad time. This fight is extremely long and difficult and there's no way possible that you can complete this on your first try. And if you did this on your first try, you must have cheated because this is, there's no way on earth you did this. Don't even try to tell me in the comments that you beat him blindfolded with one hand tied behind your back upside down when you were six. I can already see you typing that shit in the comments right now. It makes sense that this would be at the number one spot on the list considering that literally no one will shut the fuck up about Sans when Undertale is missing. He is the first one in the series that is genuinely a friend so it makes sense that he's so well spoken about. He's someone relatable. This is the hardest battle in all of Undertale too so beating Sans is an achievement of its own. Congratulations Sans on securing the number one spot on this list. Can I have a good time now? Thanks for making it to the end of this video, and shout out to Zabre for collabing with me for this Undertale ranking. Make sure to subscribe to Zabre and myself for more Undertale content. And let me ask you guys, what's your favorite Undertale boss? Let me know in the comment section down below. Shout out to my YouTube members for financially supporting the channel. You guys put that pizza on my pepperoni. And I can't forget to mention the amazing people wearing the Mr. Awesome merch. You guys represent the best of the best here at the Awesome Nation. As always, don't forget to wash your hands and stay golden. And stay determined too. <laughs>